from Hollywood, California, land of sun, fun, and the motion picture capital of the world, I'm Richard Blade, and this is our weekly look at the latest breathtaking films heading for a cinema near you. This week, Willem Dafoe and Miranda Richardson star in a drama about the traumatic first marriage of poet T.S. Eliot in Tom and Viv. Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy star in the whimsical tale of a young American and a French student who spend one night together before sunrise. We'll go behind the scenes at the making of director Robert Altman's scathing satire of life and love in the rarefied world of high fashion in Ready to Wear. And as always, we'll have our countdown of the top films at the box office in America on Cinema, Cinema, Cinema. Now it's time to take our weekly look at the hottest new films heading this way from the studios of Hollywood. Burn! American actor Willem Dafoe earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor for a film in which he faces off against Tom Berenger in a battle of wills in Oliver Stone's platoon. You ain't a firing squad, you piece of... Get him! Get him! Get him! British actress Miranda Richardson earned her Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her portrayal of an IRA terrorist in The Crying Game. Jesus, Argus, you're a walking cliché. You know, we won't leave her out of it. But I'm glad to see you, Kerr. The two of them come together for the first time in a motion picture about the unexpected elopement of poet T.S. Eliot and Vivian Haywood a doom liaison chronicled by director Brian Gilbert in Tom and Viv. Exactly how long have Tom and Viv been courting? Oh, minutes. Absolute minutes. He was the most gifted poet of his time. I'm sorry, I've never heard of T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot is the greatest living poet in the English language. She was his inspiration. The poems come out of our lives, Tom. His love. I rely on her completely. She's my first audience. And his greatest secret. You don't have to worry anymore. I've got Tom. May I ask about the marriage? No. You don't realize, of course, what she's doing to you. Miramax Films is proud to present Willem Dafoe, Miranda Richardson. You won't let them take me away from you, Tom. Behind every great love, there's a story. Behind every great passion, there's a secret. Tom and Viv. Though Ethan Hawke has appeared in the Dead Poets Society, White Fang, and Alive, he's best known for starring opposite Winona Ryder in the Generation X movie, Reality Bites. What the hell is your problem? I have to work around here, and unfortunately, Troy, you are a master at the art of time suckage. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Miss Poster Girl, for the workers' party, but until I get that uh, toehold in the burger industry, I got a little time to suck. I'd rather check into a shelter than deal with her. Ethan Hawke continues to be a Generation X icon, starring in a film by Richard Linklater, the maker of Dazed and Confused and Slacker. He finds a single night of love and connection with Julie Delpy as they wander through Vienna in Before Sunrise. Okay, now I'm going to call my best friend in Paris, who I'm supposed to have lunch with in eight hours. Okay? Okay. Ring, ring. Pick up. What? <laughs> Pick up the phone. Uh, oh, hello. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it for lunch today. I'm sorry. I met a guy on the train and, well... He convinced me. So listen, here's the deal. This is what we should do. You should get off the train with me here in Vienna and come check out the town. <laughs> what? And I don't really have enough money for a hotel, so I was just going to walk around, and it'd be a lot more fun if you came with me. Why'd you get off the train? He trapped me. We just got into Vienna today, and we're looking for something fun to do. Sprechen Sie English? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, could you speak German for a change? He's kind of tall, and he's a little clumsy. What? He has beautiful blue eyes, nice pink lips, frizzy hair. <laughs> I love it. I like to feel his eyes on me when I look away. 
You couldn't possibly know why a night like this is so important to my life right now. But it is. I think he's crazy about you. Really? You gonna see him again? We haven't talked about that yet. Hmm. Tonight's it, huh? Tonight's our only night. Do you know what I want? Hmm. To be kissed. Well, I can do that. Okay, and again, over here, please. One, two, three. Action! Director Robert Altman is at it again. Let's do one more just for laughs. Robert Altman's ready to wear. It's more outrageous than Max. Yes. Oh, my Lord. More truthful than Nashville. He was not a nice man. And more revealing than the player. It's beyond the deja vu. At the biggest fashion event of the year, <laughs> there's been a murder. The shot and prelude to the spring credit boutique collection. Julia Roberts and Tim Robbins are two reporters assigned to a story. You tell me you'd just fall into bed with the first person to pour you a glass of wine? Oh, that is just so typical. The police suspect everyone. That's him. That's the man. It could be Kim Basinger's TV journalist or a superstar photographer played by Stephen Ray. How have you managed to stay on top of everything? Probably the same way you have, Kitty. Just hard work and believing in yourself, right? Mm, taking advantage of other people's insecurities. It could be Sophia Loren. But to be murdered, strangled by a maniac, it makes my flesh crawl. He never looked better. There are as many suspects as there are stars. And every one of them has put their trust in Robert Altman. Give me that pen! I hope the women keep their dignity. Because sometimes in Robert Altman's films, I think the women lose their dignity and they always have to show their breasts. I want you to sign this contract and I want you. So take me. Oh, God, what are you doing? I think he's a great director and, you know, the chance just to sort of do this, like, sort of freewheeling you know, wacky thing with Tim. So we just thought it would be fun coming to Paris and getting paid to be silly. You know, this is a, a really unusual circumstance and I just, I just hope that you can forget about last night. I, I, I just, I hope that you can be a gentleman and that we can just say what happened last night never happened, okay? Sure. No problem. Just forgotten, like that. It's so easy. Yeah. That's great. What? What, am I supposed to be crushed or something? No. There's all different levels of comedy going on. Use your brain, your, your wrist, anything, but get me that key. I don't think he likes girls. Well, then act like a boy. These people are playing characters that are more truthful. So I just put them into this, this reality. Don't take him! I'm the cross, you! Like all of Robert Altman's films, this movie is about human nature. It's about the way people act and the way people treat one another. Altman mixes comedy and reality with nostalgia, especially when he brings Sophia Loren and Marcello Mastriani together for the first time in years. It's like family, Marcello, for me and me for him. Uh, there's a, a wonderful chemistry between us, having us together in the film. He wanted to have, not a big scene, but a little reminiscence of what we had done in one film together. And we ended up to do the beginning of the striptease in Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. So we really made a big thing out of it. Ready to Wear is perhaps Altman's most commercial film to date. And what he did to the army in MASH, country music in Nashville, and Hollywood in the player. He's about to do to the world of fashion. We were pooped and pooped and pooped. Well, it could be that we're going to be pooped again before the turn of the century. We have put together an event 
Now, direct from Hollywood, here are the top 10 box office films in America. Slipping to number 9 is a period film set in the days at the end of the American Civil War. A movie that focuses on the life and times, the dress and manners, the dreams and hopes, the highs and lows of a New England family in Little Women. One, two, three, four. It's really quite difficult in, in modern times to create a whole world in the 1860s. And I think if we'd been lax about the period, it would have been easier. But Jillian is, is very much the perfectionist. And I think it really See works. Her go behind her and then fall into the elbow. And there's been extraordinary attention to detail, uh, which I think in the end pays off. Here we come, the walk the leaks among the leaves so green. The prop department just went wild, and they had everything in that house. They had lists of what our daily activities would be. They had everything available to us in a fabulous kit. And I thought that the designers involved were all finding something authentic and something that was historically uh, interesting uh, for that period. Falling two spots to number eight is a razor-sharp drama that features a dazzling performance by Canadian actor Donald Sutherland as an unethical computer company executive who tries to finesse Michael Douglas in Disclosure. What kind of golf is this, man? I mean, this, this is boring. So we need to speed the game up, man. You ever play speed golf? Yeah, man? yeah, no, I've heard of that. Sounds like speed chess. At number seven is the first of only two comedies in this week's survey. It stars the perpetually zany funny man named Sinbad with his own twist on the game of golf in House Guest. Okay, count of three. It's going to be great. Okay. One, two, three, go. <coughs> That's the shot, huh? Nice shot, Mr. Pye. Tough break, Chip. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Need right, 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 the drink, need the drink. Come on, you got it, Caddy. There he is, there he is. Show us the course, show us the course. Oh, of course, the course. You could join me. Your old pal, the Crypt Keeper, has gone Hollywood in a big way. Can't you see what I've been working on? Usually, horror films are released at Halloween or during the summer months. But director Ernest Dickerson is warming things up with an unseasonable fright fest. The television series called Tales from the Crypt presents the film at number six this week, Demon Knight. It's about a chase through the ages. A race against time. The war between good and evil. Within five minutes, lives are like changed, like bam. You know what I'm saying? We're put under the siege of like <laughs> demons <laughs> the whole night. It's a siege picture. We needed a, a great visual stylist. Ernest is a started as a great DP doing all those movies for Spike Lee and just a, a wonderful sense of, of the camera and how to use the camera to, to get the most out of wherever he's shooting. And I think he, he's done that with this picture. Beautifully, beautifully shot. 